Hold on to your smartphones, people, because the world of tech just got a whole lot more interesting and dramatic. Pavel Durov, the notoriously private CEO of the messaging app Telegram, has been arrested. French authorities took him into custody, sending shockwaves through the tech community and beyond. Durov, often dubbed the Mark Zuckerberg of Russia, is known for his staunch stance on privacy and his creation of a platform that champions encrypted communication. Telegram has gained a reputation as a haven for free speech, attracting users from all corners of the globe. But this arrest raises a whole lot of questions and concerns. Is this a legitimate takedown of a criminal mastermind? Or is it a politically motivated attack on a platform that dares to challenge government surveillance? Buckle up, folks, because this is going to be a wild ride indeed. So who is this Pavel Durov and why should we care? Well, picture this, a young, enigmatic Russian programmer who creates a social media giant that rivals Facebook. That's Durov in a nutshell. He co-founded Vkontakte, Russia's answer to Facebook, before a high-profile falling out with the Russian government led him to flee the country. Durov, ever the tech visionary, then set his sights on a new mission, creating a messaging app that prioritizes privacy and security above all else. Enter Telegram, a platform that quickly gained a loyal following for its end-to-end -end encryption and commitment to free speech. But Durov's success hasn't come without controversy. Critics accuse Telegram of becoming a breeding ground for illegal activity with terrorists and criminals flocking to its encrypted channels. Now, with his arrest in France, Durov's carefully crafted image as a champion of privacy is facing its biggest test yet. Is he a tech genius fighting for our digital rights, or is there a darker side to the Telegram story? Born in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, Durov was always a prodigy. His early fascination with computers and programming set him apart from his peers. By the time he was in university, he had already started making waves in the tech community. Vcontacte, or VK as it's commonly known, was his brainchild, a platform that quickly became the go-to social network for millions of Russians. But success came with its own set of challenges. The Russian government, known for its tight control over the internet, soon took an interest in VK. Durov's refusal to comply with government demands for user data led to a dramatic standoff. Forced to sell his stake in VK and leave Russia, Durov didn't back down. Instead, he channeled his energy into creating Telegram. Telegram wasn't just another messaging app, it was a statement, a declaration that privacy and freedom of speech were non-negotiable. Despite the controversies, Telegram's user base continued to grow, reaching over 500 million active users. As Durov faces legal battles and scrutiny, the world watches closely. Is he a misunderstood genius, or a man whose creations have spiralled out of control? Only time will tell, but one thing is certain. Pavel Durov's story is far from over. Whether as a tech visionary or a fugitive from justice, his impact on the digital world is undeniable. Here's where things get really juicy. The charges against Durov are about as serious as they come. French authorities are accusing him of involvement in drug trafficking, child pornography and money laundering, painting a picture of a tech mastermind gone rogue. These allegations, if true, are incredibly disturbing and paint a very different picture of Durov than the one his supporters have come to know. The evidence against him remains unclear, but the French authorities are known for their thorough investigations, so this is definitely not something to be taken lightly. The crypto community, always on high alert for anything that could impact the market, went into a frenzy. Toncoin, the cryptocurrency closely linked to Telegram, took a nosedive as investors panicked, unsure of what this arrest meant for the future of the project. One thing's for sure, this is far from over. Section 4, Toncoin tumbles. The crypto market reacts to Durov's arrest. The crypto world, never one to shy away from drama, had a complete meltdown after Durov's arrest. Toncoin, the cryptocurrency deeply intertwined with Telegram and its ambitious blockchain project, plummeted in value. Investors, known for their nerves of steel, or maybe just a lack of sleep, hit the sell button faster than you can say rug pull. The connection between Telegram and Toncoin runs deep. Durov envisioned a future where Toncoin would power a decentralized economy within Telegram, with users seamlessly sending and receiving payments. 
But with Durov behind bars, the future of this ambitious project is about as clear as a crystal ball filled with mud. The crypto market, already known for its volatility, went into overdrive. Speculation ran rampant. Was this the end of Tongcoin? Would Telegram crumble without its enigmatic leader? Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure, this arrest sent a chill down the spines of crypto enthusiasts everywhere. Section 5, a crackdown on free speech. The implications for online communication. In today's digital age, the way we communicate has fundamentally changed. The internet has become a vital platform for free expression, allowing people to share their thoughts and ideas with a global audience. Durov's arrest has sparked a global debate about freedom of speech. This incident has brought to light the delicate balance between security and privacy and how governments and tech companies navigate this complex landscape. And the role of tech companies in a world increasingly obsessed with surveillance. As surveillance technologies become more advanced, the potential for abuse grows, raising concerns about the erosion of civil liberties. Telegram, with its commitment to encryption and user privacy, stands as a symbol of resistance against unwarranted government intrusion. The app's robust security features have made it a popular choice for those who prioritize their privacy, has become a refuge for activists, journalists, and dissidents around the world. These individuals rely on secure communication channels to share information and organize without fear of reprisal, and anyone else who values their right to communicate freely without government interference. The ability to speak freely and privately is a cornerstone of democratic societies, and any threat to this freedom is a cause for concern. But this arrest raises uncomfortable questions about the future of online communication. It forces us to consider the implications of living in a world where our digital interactions are constantly monitored and scrutinized. If a tech CEO like Durov can be arrested on such serious charges, it sets a dangerous precedent. It suggests that no one is immune to the reach of government surveillance and control. What does that mean for the average user? The average person may feel increasingly vulnerable, wondering if their private messages could one day be used against them. Are we all just one message away from a knock on the door? This fear can have a chilling effect on free speech as people may self-censor to avoid potential repercussions. Governments around the world have been trying to get their hands on encrypted messaging apps like Telegram for years, often citing national security concerns. They argue that these apps can be used by criminals and terrorists to evade detection arguing that they provide a safe haven for criminals and terrorists. However, this perspective overlooks the legitimate need for privacy and secure communication in an increasingly digital world. But privacy advocates argue that encryption is essential for protecting our digital rights. They contend that weakening encryption would not only compromise our privacy, but also make us more vulnerable to cyber threats and that weakening it would have chilling consequences for free speech. The debate over encryption and privacy is far from over, and its outcome will shape the future of online communication for years to come. Section 6. The Balancing Act. Moderation versus Censorship in the digital age. Durov's arrest throws a giant wrench into the already messy debate about content moderation and censorship online. This incident has sparked a global conversation raising questions about the extent to which governments and tech companies should intervene in regulating online content. On one hand, we have the very real issue of harmful content like hate speech, harassment and incitement to violence spreading like wildfire on social media. These toxic elements can cause significant harm to individuals and communities, leading to real-world consequences such as mental health issues, violence and societal division. On the other hand, we have the equally important right to free speech and the danger of censorship, especially by powerful tech companies or governments with their own agendas. The fear is that once censorship begins, it can be used to suppress dissenting voices and control the narrative, stifling democracy and freedom. Finding the right balance between protecting users from harm and upholding free speech is like walking a tightrope over a pit of angry crocodiles. It's a delicate and precarious act requiring careful consideration and constant adjustment to avoid falling into either extreme. Some argue that platforms like Telegram have a responsibility to moderate content more aggressively, even if it means sacrificing some level of privacy. 
They believe that stricter moderation can create a safer online environment, preventing the spread of harmful content and protecting vulnerable users. Others believe that any form of censorship is a slippery slope and that we should fight tooth and nail to protect our right to communicate freely online, even if it means encountering some unsavory characters along